Hey there, beautiful souls. Welcome to the Sacred Soul Shift series. I'm your host, Vanessa, your trusted soul navigator and energy alchemist. In this series, we'll embark on soul-stirring adventures through the realms of intuition and self-healing with women across all modalities where ancient wisdom and modern insights intertwine. So if you're tired of the scripted routine and ready for healing and growth, my kindred spirit, this series is crafted just for you. It's time for your Sacred Soul Shift. So today we are all about self-love. You know, guys, this is my passion point. I started my business based around self-love Wednesday. It's going to talk about this with Jacqueline, but let me introduce her. I am so excited to bring her in, guys. I love connecting with people that, that are on the same vibey level as me. Let me read her bio for you. It is super long, so I'm going to try and read all of her PowerPoints here. She is into all the things. Jacqueline Ortiz, the self love diva. Jacqueline is a self love dating law of attraction and empowerment mentor. Today, guys, we are going to be diving into <laughs> how do you self love to attract love, right? Soulmates, because that's what I'm all about here. Um, single ladies, yes. <laughs> right here, Jacqueline, I'm going to need this help. <laughs> Jacqueline is the founder of the six step self love high vibe re imprinting system and hype me up. Sounds a little bit twilighty and I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you about that too, Jacqueline. Um, she is the creator of the self love mastery course. She is a published author. She is a speaker, a neuro linguistic, a life coach, hypnotherapist, feng shui consultant, Reiki master. She's a dream sculpting coach and serial entrepreneur. Sounds like me. I'm into all the things as well. Uh, she integrates her passion for mind, body, spirit and environment to empower women to break through, cultivate and elevate their level of self-love and self-confidence. Yes, thereby raising their vibration to attract deeply loving relationships and their heartfelt desires. I will go into what you do and all that jazz later. Let's bring her in. Welcome, Jacqueline. Thank you for joining us today. I'm so excited. Okay. I'm, I'm more excited. I'm thrilled to be here. You're talking. I'm like, can, can we get started? Can we get started? I'm ready to go. <laughs> Jacqueline's super pumped, guys. I love Jacqueline's energy. Let me just first say that self-love <laughs> is kind of how I started my business. I'll give you a five second of me, but it's not about me today. But just so you know, um, I got into like my spiritual journey and all this kind of thing coming out of a shitty relationship, right? I was in domestic violence, blah, blah, blah. We don't need to go into that. But I kind of stumbled into my spiritual journey from that point. And I actually started my business, Sacred Mune based on the theory of self-love Wednesday. So every Wednesday I do like a post with this self-love thing I was doing. And that's exactly how I started my business. And it's kind of remained the central pillar of my business. And it's kind of what I base all of my kind of women's empowerment work around. Um, so I'm super excited to bring you in and talk to, about self-love because it's such like, oh, it just gives me goosebumps. And it's literally like everything that kind of snowballed for me and it's everything that I base my business around and I love hearing other people's perceptions and I love hearing like other people's little methods and toolkits and words of wisdom as you know I love bringing every woman in here and teaching all the things that people teach but when it's something that really you know hits on one of my passion points I love learning more about it and I love hearing from different perspectives so thank you so much for joining us no thank you I'm thrilled to be here I'm super super pumped super pumped <laughs> Okay, Jacqueline, so as we read in your bio, you're a woman of, of many talents and I love learning and I know for me it was kind of, I always talk about with spiritual people, you know, stumbling into all the different things we learn. <clears throat> it's not necessarily what ends up being our business, but everything we learn is a teacher and it points us in new directions and having so much stuff under your belt. Can we go back to the start? What kind of, you know, created Jacqueline Ortiz, what was the, the beginning of your journey and what led you to learning all of these different things and, and how how did you become who you are today? Whoa, well, since I'm so <laughs> young, it won't take me very long. Um, <laughs> but bottom line is, um, they always say your mess is your message. And I was in a pile of mess. I was like, in the, I needed the shovel to pick out the mess, but um, actually it wasn't that bad. I was in a 20 year marriage that lasted Way, 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 way too long. Did I say way too long? Yeah, way, way too long. But it was, but that was good because it made me who I am. But anyway, going back, I was what I call the perfect storm. The perfect storm for me was numerous things. It was seven things. Most of the highlights was I lost 50% of my hair. I was 
working 80 plus hour work weeks at um, a restaurants with my ex-husband, working with him full time and his girlfriend. Fun, fun, fun. And she's 24 years <laughs> younger than him. Fun, fun, fun. Anyway, so I was working full time with him and all our business partners, everything else. So working 80 plus hour work weeks, 24 seven because restaurants open 365 days a year. I was going to hormonal changes, um, cortisol overdrove. I mean, my whole life was, I was spinning out of control and I knew what it was, but I just wasn't ready to face it. Cause you know, when you're so worried about everybody else and caring about everybody else. And sometimes we put ourselves last, even though I'm a self love diva and I know better because mm -hmm. my journey started, I should fast forward to around 2005, 2006. I wrote my first book, Extraordinary You. And I was just about to market the book. And just when I was about to do all this stuff, my then husband almost died. So I went on survivor mode. I had to pick up all the pieces, trying to figure everything out. So I put that in the back burner and I went to do what he wanted to do, which opened restaurants, which we did. And I did something which I had zero passion for. For me, food is nutrient that we need. It's not something, I'm not like a foodie, foodie type of person. So 24 seven restaurants was not my ideal. So I was working crazy. I was doing his passion, but of course I put my back burner. So that's when I realized one day I realized I just can't do this anymore between my hormonal, my hair falling out, out of stress, out of anxiety, working with my ex-husband full time. I mean, this was like every day and losing so much hair and the end of a five year relationship that happened unexpectedly out of nowhere. So my, I'm just, I couldn't do anymore. So I called my, my business partner, which was also my ex-husband. I go, I can't do this anymore. He goes, what are you talking about? I go, I got to go. He goes, well, where are you going? I go, I don't know. He goes, well, when are you leaving? Tomorrow morning. So this is like midnight. You know, I woke him up, him and his girlfriend. I woke him up. I, next morning, I pack up everything. And as I'm getting out of the driveway to drive to who knows where I was going, um, I, I see signs and symbols as everything. I call it has heaven sent signs, symbols, and synchronicities. That's why I called it. Anyway, so this huge dragonfly just stopped right in front of the dashboard, uh, the windowsill, the window thing. And it was just like staring at me. And I'm like, you're giving me permission to just go on now, go. I'm going. So then it's funny. Then I drove it like a, two blocks and it landed again. I didn't take a DNA test, but I know it was the same one. Landed in the same spot. I'm like, this is freaky. So then I drive and I'm driving and driving and driving. And I drove from, at the time I was living in the Fort, Lee, uh, Fort Lauderdale area. I drove from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, all the way to California and made a U-turn and end up in Arizona. Here I am. I moved here. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anything. But my journey is cross country. That was supposed to take four days. But what the blank, blank. It took me over two weeks because I was having such a blast driving by myself. I had never, ever been on my own. I, I went from being from my parents' house to being married 20 something years. So I was never on my own. So here I am on my own trying to figure it out. For the first time, I got to eat, do anything I want to do whenever I wanted. No, not like what was his schedule. What was, it was like, oh my God. It was like liberation. It was freedom. It was, I guess it was like back then when the women burnt their bras. I was like, I'm going to burn something. This is amazing. <laughs> I'm like, this is awesome. So that's the, my, the second phase of my journey. When That's when I did second. That's why I did self-love mastery course. I became the self-love diva. And it's all about empowering women to really love themselves. Because like you said, basically, I know for a fact that not only is this my calling, but self-love is the superpower for everything. It's the key, the foundation, the superpower to attract true love and joy and abundance and your heart's desire and everything. So that's how we came to Self Love Diva. Love it. <laughs> I love it. And I love people. I just love stories of women like claiming their power back. That is just uh, what I'm all about it. And I love your story about leaving everything. I, I so do. In 2020, I sold my house, like literally had the life, the life, right? The societal dream life, living on the beach, working and management, blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, I've been doing all the spiritual stuff as a side hustle for about 10 years nearly now and sold everything I owned bought a motor home and all of last year I just traveled and it was the best feeling ever. Like <laughs> not being tied to anything. You stole my having, life. I want your you know, life. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I am I'm continuing next year on my journey around the rest of Australia, but yeah, it's so liberating. As you said, just 
not have, being tied to any kind of responsibility, not being tied to anyone else's bullshit, anyone else's expectations, just doing what you want to do and just living, right? Just living in in the nature, in the in all the energies. Yeah, it was beautiful and it was amazing. So I, I'm wow. all about people liberating themselves. My hats are off to you, woman. That's amazing. You stole my yeah. life. That's what I want to do. Oh my God, it's awesome. More power. Yeah, to people you. say I'm I'm crazy, but yeah, it's not fuck that. It's it's, it's what like I wanted to do. So you are crazy like a fox. You go girl. That's awesome. But yeah, COVID had me all like that because I love traveling and I was stuck. So I'm just like, fuck it, I'm getting rid of them. I'm just doing me. <laughs> so that's what I that's my life. And you're doing amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Love that story. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so I, I love liberating stories. It's it's what I'm about. Um, so what are we here for today? Self-love. Tell us all the things, Jacqueline, and, and unload your wisdom on us. I would love to learn about using self-love to attract soulmates and relationships because I know what it's all about. But as you said, being the self-love diva, sometimes we need our own medicine. Like we can give all the advice. We know what we should be doing, but obviously... <laughs> shit happens we're humans we don't always take our own advice right so spill to us what what's it all about how I'll can we go about i'll spill the beans well like mm -hmm. i said before self-love is a superpower for everything so if you want to attract true healthy love it all starts with self-love and what happens is many times we get beaten up and we're in bad relation not, maybe not physically i mean physically emotionally mentally whatever way um uh, uh, verbally abusive or whatever it is, we get quote unquote beat up one way or the other. And we just take it and take it and we don't realize it. And finally we break up and we end up with a divorce or they divorce us, whatever it is. And then we're like, oh my God, now what do I do? You know, and they don't realize that it's impossible to go from toxic love because what happens is we have one relationship after another, after another, same relationship, just different men, different faces or different women, whichever way we're talking to. But anyway, so it's the same relationship, just different people, different faces. And what we need to do is instead of thinking we could go from toxic love to true soulmate love, there's a bridge that we have to cross. There's that gap. How do we cross that gap? And the bridge is self-love. It really is. Because once we go from toxic love, if we stay there and we try to get true love, we attract more toxic love onto ourselves. But the moment we step out of that and we love ourselves and we heal ourselves and we prioritize ourselves and love on ourselves so we don't need to have someone else's love, that's when the floodgates open up. That's when other people want to be around us, other men. Because now they see the value that we have in ourselves. But if we don't value ourselves, we are mirrors. They don't see the value in us. So the important thing is for us to heal. And once we do that, then we start attracting at that energetic vibration, true healthy love. And isn't that what we all want? We already had enough toxic oh. love. I'm sure we all have. Everyone's on this show, just about every woman and man has had one sob story after another about heartbreak or divorce or whatever it is. Or they've seen it in their families. Uh, head, headridge. Either way, what we all crave is that true, loving, unconditional, heartfelt, centers, heart-centered love where we feel loved and supported. We, we're not looking for toxic love. We have that, been there, done that. So as soon as we heal, then we start attracting, or as we're healing in our journey, we start up-leveling the people that we attract into our lives. So. Yes. And I love that you're talking about value because the majority of the time when that sort of stuff happens, like, and it's all shitty stuff, right? And it, it blindsides us. So it's, it's 99% of the time and it happens unexpectedly. Um, the first time, right, that, that any of this stuff happens. So it, it immediately, immediately kind of tarnishes our own self-worth. We think there's something wrong with us. Our value goes down. You know, we think we're not worthy for more. And as you said, it's the same relationship over and over again. So when we're attracting the same kind of person into our life, we're, we're immediately thinking that's, that's what we're worth. Like that's as best as we can get. We're obviously trying to get more, but we keep getting this same kind of energy drawn to us. So we think like that's it, or there must be something wrong with us. <laughs> yes, absolutely true. And many times we start thinking there's something wrong with us, but most of the time it's because they imprint that in us. They make us feel like we're the ones that are wrong. They gaslight us, they tell us something's wrong, they make us feel whether they say verbally or physically or 
um, the, the behavior, the body language, because 93% of all communication is body language. So you may say something like, how about this? You know, he or he or she is like, and a little bit after a little bit, we learn to suppress who we really are to try to accommodate or not to get hurt or just to avoid confrontation or arguments or anything. And then more we suppress ourselves, the more we suppress our energy, our vitality, and we're no longer authentic to who we are and we feel less than or not good enough. And that affects the people that we attract. Because then when we feel not that we're not good enough, we attract others that feel they're not good enough. And they have to project onto them onto us because they they see us as easier targets because we feel we're not good enough. So it's easy for them to manipulate us or brainwash us, let's say. So yeah. So um would you like me to give you some nuggets of how um I would work with that? Okay. Give us everything. I was <laughs> In, uh, Dona Soyo, in Arizona, I was in Arizona and my dad's working, working. I was creating this course, self love mastery and I'm creating it. And I got this, this voice in my head telling me, just go for a drive. This is during COVID. I'm like, I don't have time for that. I'm like, I'm thinking I have so much to do. I'm typing away and I'm, I'm like, I'm like, okay. Cause I obey. So I decided to go for a drive. I get in the car. It's like a 20 minute drive to go hiking and I'm driving all of a sudden I'm like, <gasps> I pull over to the side of the road and I was driving getting napkins from the glove compartment, just taking notes, notes, notes. I'm not very tech. I, didn't I, didn't I ran out of napkins before I remember, oh, I have a phone. I could talk into my phone. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm looking for napkins underneath the car seat everywhere. I'm like taking notes. I'm like, it was downloaded on me. And these are the six steps um, to reimprint high vibe um, uh, self-love. But we could use this to attract true cellmate love. So let's say, for instance- You could call it this too. I just want to chime in. I have I'd never heard of that word imprinting until I watched Twilight. I love that you call your system imprinting. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you. You know, we're soul sisters. Don't you know that, right? All right. I just love anything connected to empowering women. So the six step high vibe reimprinting is all about when you see yourself attracting toxic love or less than or someone that in the same type of relationship over and over again and you want to attract true healthy love. The best way to do it is step one, to recognize. And recognize is just becoming aware of what it is. Because if you're not aware, you know, it's like the little guppy who's in a little fishbowl and the guppy thinks it's in the ocean. And it's like, no, you're in a little guppy. In a little. We need to see and become aware. And then once we become aware, we could heal. Then we know what we could target and go toward. So that's a step one. Then after you become aware, what are the triggers? For instance, if we keep attracting guys that are or women that are narcissistic or physically abusive or emotionally abusive or cold or detached, then we need to become aware and then recognize what where's that coming from. And the best way to do it is to regress back in time. I'm a hypnotherapist and past life regressionist, but we don't have to go all that. You can do it or your audience can do it on their own to some extent, which is just regress. Put yourself in a quiet meditative state and go back in time and go back and go back and see where you are and what ha was happening to you to make you feel that way? Usually it's something that happened between the ages zero and seven and go back and realize it. And I do that with my hype me ups, which hype me ups is the system I created. They're hypnosis meditation session. That's why it's called hype me up hypnosis and meditation together, but we'll find out about that more later. So that's how you go through the process with those meditations. But anyway, so you regress back and you will regress back not to reside or to stay there, but just to revisit, to get the nuggets, and extrapolate, extract the lessons. And once you get the lessons, then you reframe the lesson. So let's say, for instance, um, you have this belief that someone cheated on you. You go, oh, all men cheat. All men cheat. Oh my God, I hate men. Men cheat. I can't trust men. Where do you get that from? And you go back in time. Maybe your father cheated or a uh, family members or something. It was something that your mom kept saying because she had experienced that or whatever it was. And then you come back. Once you get the less out, that's where I got it from. Then you start saying things like, all men cheat? Really? Is that true? And start making holes. I call it like the Swiss cheese method. Take, keep putting holes in the Swiss cheese and holes. And, and some people say breakthrough. I say destroy that, that belief. Destroy it, the negative belief. So you say, really, do all men cheat? And then start looking who in your life has been faithful. Like for example, you know, that's not true. My father has always been faithful. My ex, that ex, ex boyfriend, maybe one or two weren't, but what about that one? What about that one? Start making lists or your friend's husband or whoever it is. 
they're faithful. So no, it's not true that all men cheat. So I am able then to also find, so then you rewrite the story. Like, you know what? So-and-so and so-and-so and so never cheated. They were, they were, so my, my belief is wrong. Or it's not a hundred percent true. Therefore I can find someone that will love me truly and completely faithfully and forever. So if they can, so can I, I can find someone I'm deserving. I'm worthy. I am more than good enough to find someone that will love me. If someone in the past cheated me, it's on them. They didn't recognize my value because they don't recognize the value in themselves. They need to prove something to themselves because they didn't feel worthy. But that's not my story. My story is like, yes. damn, I got it going on. <laughs> so you rewrite your story the way you want. You keep writing it forward, 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 forward. And then once you rewrite the story from being a victim to being a victor, from being um, bro- breaking down to breakthrough. And then what you do is you rewire it and how you re- you reframe it. So that's reframing it into the positive. Then you rewrite the story. And then step number five is to rewire it. Rewiring is Dr. H. Lipton has said he is a renowned PhD, Stanford um, doctor and uh, lecturer and world world renowned. He has the best selling books, uh, the, uh, the Truth of Biology, the Cell Biology. So he is the real deal. PhD from Stanford doesn't get better than that. So it's not like a woo-woo. Some people say like, yeah, that's your woo-woo stuff, Jack. I'm like, no, he's got a PhD. So there you go for the credentials in case someone says like, yeah, 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 whatever. But the, the legit, right, you know, best-selling New York Times bestseller, et cetera, et cetera. And he says that the best way to reprogram yourself, which is like green printing, best way is from the age of zero to seven is with, hypnosis because when we are children that's why we would say like children oh my god a little kiss like a sponge it's because they're working at a different um brain wave which is theta which is a very slow hypnotic way that's why they learn so fast everything goes in which is really good because they learn fast but it's really bad when they're learning bad things so that's why it's good mm-hmm. to reprogram the negative into positive with hypnosis which is again dr h um lipton says that's uh, one of the two best ways to learn um, to reprogram the mind, hypnosis. And after the age of seven or eight is habituations, which is affirmations, doing the same thing over and over again, like how you ride a bike, how you learn to do anything, you driving a car over and over again, you practice. So those are the two best methods. So it's rewire. And how the best way to rewire is for hypnosis and affirmations. And then that's where I put in the step six. And, and this was like literally downloaded to me. I mean, it was just like, Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I must have been done something right. Karma's coming back to me for past life. But anyway, and then number um, number six is to reimprint. And reimprinting is basically the hype me ups, which is the hypnosis and meditation. And then, of course, with the hypnosis and meditation, what you do is this: you go through. In my hypnosis and meditation, what you do is you go through the six steps, and you go through each one when you're in a hypnotic state, and it's it's like a loose hypnosis and meditation. It's not like you're out, out, like done, done, but you could do this for yourself um, with my meditations. But anyway, and that's how you do it. You recognize, become aware. Then you re- regress to go back and see and examine the lesson. What was it? What was the trigger? What triggers you? And then once you do that, you reframe it into the positive, of course. Then you rewrite it, the story, the way you want it to be. Then you rewire it with hypnosis and affirmations or mantras, or anything that you just do over and over again. Because again, the subconscious, I didn't say this. Am I talking too much? I do. I'm like, I'm like, I'm so, I'm like, because like, um, our mind doesn't know the difference between what's true and what's not. And our minds, 95% is the subconscious and 5% is the conscious. And that's why so many times we say, well, we want to lose weight or we have New Year's resolutions. We all know that. And I, I'm, I'm a gym rat. I go to a gym every January and February. I expect it to be jam packed, like they're giving stuff away. And it's packed. By February, March, it starts to slow down and the regulars keep coming, and that's it. And that's why everybody makes New Year's resolutions. I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to exercise. And they don't keep it up because consciously, yes, you do want it. Subconsciously, it's 95%. Who do you think is running the show? The subconscious. Mm-hmm. And it sabotages you. So that's why. That's why I, my work is the self-love mastery course is about doing both. You do the subconscious, which is 95, and you become in alignment and you work together with the conscious. So when you work together, the conscious and the subconscious, they align. They're working toward a tower, a common gold, common gold. Because imagine you're doing tug of war and 
one's pulling one way, the other one's pulling the other way, you're not going to get anywhere. You're going to cancel each other out. Or, of course, the subconscious is going to win. And the subconscious also always wants to keep you safe where you're at because it doesn't want to risk you. It, it thinks it's protecting you, but it's not protecting you when you need to do something else. So consciously, you make the conscious decision what you want to do. You want to attract true love? Okay, let's go for it. But you need to have your subconscious because what happens is when we don't do that, our subconscious is repelling us, our energetic level, because our belief, all our negative beliefs come up. We could be on a date with a great guy and everything's wonderful, but we start thinking, mm, something's too good to be true. Or maybe he's married, or maybe this, or maybe that. We start thinking or sabotage. Or maybe if we have, a, if we don't feel we love ourselves enough, we don't, we think, well, what happens if you re realize that I'm not good enough? Or I'm not, you know what I'm saying? When you have those beliefs, or what if he think if he finds out that I don't do this, or I do that, I'm not worthy, I'm not deserving that. What if he, he finds out he's too good for me? Now that they are, but when we have that low self-esteem, we believe stuff like that, we bring up stories, and that repels us from attracting true love. So if we go around thinking we're not good enough, we're not sexy enough, we're not attractive enough, we're not fit enough, I need to get this before I can. So how many, how many times do we say, oh, I'll start dating when I lose 10 pounds. I'll start dating when I um, get into better shape. I'll start dating when I get a new wardrobe. I'll start dating when I get a makeover. I'll start dating when the kids are older, whatever it is. But we are putting walls around ourselves and there's no reason to. And you know what that is? It's our subconscious protecting us or thinking it's protecting us from getting hurt. But it's just excuses. We're self-sabotaging ourselves. And the most important thing is once we learn to love ourselves, we can overcome the toxic love, heal that toxic love, fill ourselves up with self-love, so much love that we know our boundaries. We know how empowered we are. We know how good we are for ourselves, not in a conceited way, but we know how powerful we are in our authentic self. And that's when we start attracting true love. So the key is self-love. Yes. <laughs> yes to everything you just said. Yes. I'm all over that. <laughs> I, I do root cause therapy and that kind of sounds like a bit like the same thing that you kind of do with your hip, like your regression with your hypnotherapy. Um, and yes, thank you for saying that because <clears throat> not to shit all over, you know, psychotherapy and <laughs> psychologists and all that. Mm. I, I believe everyone can help someone, but you know, it's not always about going back and reliving the pain over and over again until you're healed. You know, you don't need that. You need the lessons. You need to go back to the very first moment you felt that way to feel the feelings, release it, get the lessons and move on. And I think you just nailed that on the head just then when you were talking Absolutely. about regression, going back to the, the first point that it happened. I think people get a whole lot of fear around doing that because, oh, I don't want to have to relive that over and over again. But it's not about that. It's about getting the lessons. Absolutely. And I love as well how you like find truth that the opposite is real <laughs> i love that too finding whatever shit limiting belief you're believing and finding a moment in time when the opposite is true and proving to yourself that it's not real yes <laughs> yes it's I a swiss that. cheese method swiss cheese mm -hmm. make holes in it but like my hypnosis like with each module with each lesson that i teach it comes with a hypnosis session and the hypnosis sessions are the longest one is the first one because it's like the biggest one in my course. Mm -hmm. It's like 45 minutes, but they're usually about 25, 30 minutes. And you listen to them and you go back and you go back and you're like, oh. And once you start, then afterwards, the way I word it, I re-imprint so much powerful stuff that you're literally walking on air. You're like, yeah, I am the goddess. Oh yeah, I got it going on. I'm, I'm being silly. But I, I, at the end, once I, we recognize and regress, and that all takes about 30, 35 minutes that you listen to, and you listen to it every day for at least 21 days because we need to reprogram years of junk and ga garbage. But mm -hmm. um, after 25, 30 minutes, you listen to it, and if you fall asleep, you fall asleep, it's okay, because your subconscious is always awake listening. So. You go through all this. It, I walk you through all the steps. And when you're walking back, it's just about maybe four or five minutes if, if you break the, re, the regression going back and revisiting. And then you scrap lane. Then it takes you from where you are back then. Let's say you're four or five years old. Then you start walking in, your, in the imagery. You start walking forward. And as you're walking forward, it changes. Because what happens is when you're here, you rewrite the story. And when you rewrite the story, now as you're walking and things are happening in your walkway 
you see things in a different way. And by the time you get to the near the end with screen printing, what I talk about is about how powerful you are, how courageous, how confident, how you stepped into your own power, how you are unstoppable, you unleash the inner goddess in you, how you feel blah, 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 like on and on and on and on and on. You can tell I go on and on and on and on and on. And then you just like, I'm like, okay, now I'm going to walk you up and you're going to get up and you're going to feel amazing. Every day you're going to wake up with a smile and you're going to wake up going through the day feeling unstoppable, confident, empowered, unleashing the biggest, most smile onto everybody, feeling, you know, whatever it is, I just keep going, depending which lesson we're going through because we go through inner child, we go to self-love, we go through chakras, we go to energy healing, all that stuff. But yeah, so it's not, it's definitely a lot going back and reciting and taking, you know, buying a home, a condo over there. It's just, you go in there, you're like, oh, let me see what happened. All right, that's enough. Because you know that, Vanessa, I'm sure that mm -hmm. you, well, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that you advocate the same thing from what you just said, which is like all about energy and vibration, you know? And if we go week after week after week and we relive the same thing over again, not only are we reliving the pain, which I don't want to, because I'm all about being happy and happy energy, happy vibration. Not only do we relive the pain and we, they are, we live, leave the session feeling depressed and reminiscing over and over again and we regurgitating the same thing over again. But not just that, our energy and our vibration takes a dip. And you know what that happens. Once it goes in the blank, blank hole, then we start attracting SHIT into our lives and we don't want that. Mm -hmm. so it's all about race and vibration. So yeah, no, this, the, like I said, this was like download. It was like, it was like all about empowering, unleashing the inner goddess in you, the best of you to how you can um, re-imprint anything that happened regardless. Like when I was six, something tragic happened and I've been able to re-imprint and use that to work with the women. And in the most empowering way, because I reframed everything. I rewrote the story, what in the meaning, because everything that happens to you and me and anyone on the planet has no meaning. It's all neutral. It's the meaning we give to it. And you and I can choose to change the meaning. And the best way to change, the easiest way to change the meaning is by hypnosis, by transforming, re-imprinting that a new belief into it. Yes, I love mm -hmm. that. And it's so true and it can happen really quickly once you change something from the past and you, um, the way I talk about it is as you're coming back, it flashes back all your recent, um, when you were, whatever it was that you went back to, to heal, right? And to get a new learning from every time that happened along your path in the future would heal as you're coming back. And it's very quick that you can get, you know, in life now, it's very quick how you can go and do that and things ch happen and change like instantly in your life and like as you said it's all about empowering and getting confidence and it's amazing once you release those limiting beliefs how quickly things can start to shift and change um i want to talk about affirmations you briefly touched on it. i love using affirmations i think there's a lot of i don't know if it's been overworked or over the words just gone out there and people are like eh, affirmations don't work <laughs> I love using affirmations and I think it's the way that people approach them and use them as a tool that it's kind of, there's so many different things out there, like information and just how to use them and what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing. What's your take on affirmations and how should people um, be using them to kind of help shift their, their mental state? Because I don't think people get that so much nowadays. I think they just go, I'm going to say these few things and life's going to change, but I don't see it that way. I just want your take on using affirmations. In my book, I call it the <laughs> affirmations, the manure sandwich. If we mm -hmm. go to doing a manure sandwich, which is a tiny, tiny little slice of bread, lots of SHIT manure in the middle and another little slice of bread, it doesn't work because if we spend two or three or four or five minutes saying affirmations and the whole day we spread saying, all this negative stuff all day over and over again and a tiny little bit before we go to bed, what do you think is gonna win out? All that negative SHIT we say all day long. So if that's the way you're gonna use affirmations, you're right, they don't work. But if you use the affirmations the way I believe you do and the way I absolutely do, I, this is, I, I've told a few people this, but not a lot of people. I literally, this is my Bluetooth. I took it off because I didn't know with tech if it was gonna do something. I literally turned it off now just for the, the program, but I have, numerous ones always charged 24 hours i eat sleep i do everything 
listening to affirmations. I sleep with them. Those eight hour ones, actually my YouTube channels, I have a whole bunch of subliminal and spoken ones, 10 hour, 12 hours. I always, always, always have affirmations. And I believe when you use affirmations, I'm sorry, let me, let me reframe that. <laughs> I know for a fact, I know, I know, like I know, like I know the sun rises every morning in the East and sets in the West. The affirmations work. How? Look at me. I live by affirmations. I always have them on. Even when I'm working in the background, I have the subliminal one. So you don't hear anything. All you do is hear the little music, like soft melodies or something. Um, I sleep with them on all night long. There's only two times that I don't have affirmations on or some kind of positive something in reinforcement. Two times. When I'm taking a shower or when I'm having SEX. Other than that, they're on all the time. I'm always listening. I drive wherever I drive. I do laundry. I do dishes. It doesn't matter. I'm always listening to affirmations. Why? There's so much, especially now more than ever with everything that's happening in the world, there's so much negativity and so many things going on. <laughs> And the world and the energy is so heavy. So for me, it's vital to have positive affirmations on all the time. I love them. I live by them. But also another thing too, people listen, sometimes they say affirmations. I'm attracted to my soulmate. He's coming soon. I know he is. I've been waiting all my life, but eventually I'm going to find someone. I'm so sick of waiting. No, no. Say it with emotion. You got to do emotion to get motion, to get the energy flowing. So damn, I'm a hot baby. I am hot. I am sexy. I'm attractive. I'm fit. I am attracting the love of my life. You know what? This is my time. Mr. Right step into my life now. Why? Because I am deserving. I am worthy. I am powerful. I am confident. I'm beautiful. I am smart. I am uh, optimistic. I am happy. I am joyful. I attract, I'm living in a high vibration. So I'm attracting a high quality man or woman into my life. I am deserving. I am worthy. Here he comes now. Oh yeah, baby. I'm opening the door right now. Woo, baby. You know, it's saying it with affirmation, with conviction, not just going through the motions of like, yeah, whatever, you know? Yes. So it's all about, and I am to putting yourself in the position that it's already happened, not something that you want to draw into your life. It's really powerful as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's about the emotion, the feeling, feeling it like really powerful, mm -hmm. not just going through the motions of repetition, like a, like a hamster wheel over and over again. It's not about that. It's about really stepping into it as, like you said, as it's already happened. It's a reality that you're stepping into. Because like we said before, your brain doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's not. So you have a choice. You can step into the, the reality of he's not here now. Where's he going now? I've been waiting all my life. I can't find someone. No one ever good. They're all lies. They're all cheaters. I can't find a good man. All the good ones are taken, blah, blah, blah. You can step into that reality and guess what? You're going to create that. So you have a choice mm -hmm. or do you choose that? Yes, he's here now. I, uh, I am so happy. Whatever it is. I, I mean, I'm deeply madly in love with the man of my dreams. Um, he's even better than I ever dreamed. Oh my God, look how juicy he is. You know, whatever you say to yourself, but say it with emotion and with that, like you said, belief that it's already. Yeah. Happened. I love to use them too as like a visualization tool when I'm writing down affirmation. I write down my affirmations. I love writing affirmations and kind of putting myself into the picture at the moment that I'm writing the affirmation and really, as you said, that feeling and like getting all the senses across all the senses. What does that feel like to be in that moment? And it can be really powerful just shifting I like to use affirmation. I tell people to use it as, as a mental shift, not as just something you say and you're thinking it in that one second, but really using it to shift your thought pattern as a tool, not just something, oh, I do affirmations in the morning, as you said, the shit sandwich. <laughs> um, <laughs> really feeling into it and using it to shift your mentality into something that you know can work and you can have that thing and you can be that person. Um, it's about shifting that thought process and then eventually that will be your thought process, right? It's about coming at it from that perspective rather than just, I'm going to say these things a couple of times a day and then the universe will do its magic. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. Which, yeah. And you have to, and that's the thing we back to self love. We have to feel we deserve it and we're worth it because we could say, Oh, I have this great guy. But if you don't 
feel you're deserving or worthy, your energy is going to repel that person because you're going to have like heart walls, walls around you that no one can penetrate. Or the ones that can penetrate are the ones you just don't want in your life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you don't feel worthy and deserving, you either A, want to attract the, the man of your dreams, or if you do attract someone, it's someone that is toxic or won't stay around because then they'll see in you what you see in yourself, which is not true, but that you see yourself as not worthy. So if you see yourself as not good enough, not worthy, why would someone stay with you long term if they if you don't feel that by yourself? So the most important thing is for you to love yourself, to feel good enough and deserving, and then you will attract that person. And that person will feel blessed to be in your life. So the important thing is to do the work on loving yourself. And like I always say, the most vital, most important relationship is you because you're with you. 24-7, 365 days a year. Can't run away from you. You can run away from you. You can run away in your mobile home anywhere you want. You can run away from your ex-husband, from your boyfriend, from parents, anybody. Can't run away from you. You're always you and you can't run away. You can't even hide. Nothing. So just face up, look yourself in the mirror and start telling yourself how much you love yourself, how worthy you are, how you're deserving. Do the shadow work. You know what I'm saying? Do all that and just step into your own power by affirming, visualizing yourself, like it says already there. Like, uh, let's say you choose love. What, you, what I do is, I have my women, my clients, just visualize themselves. Like, let's say this, <laughs> sitting in the bedroom and they're lying in the bedroom in some sexy lingerie and they see, they're like, close their eyes and they see, honey, you're home. And they have their eyes closed and it's like their honey, their husband walking in from work and they're like, and the man comes in and he's, oh baby, I love you, I miss you all day. And have a conversation without him saying the things you wish you, he will say and then you responding and having this conversation, him coming over and just grabbing you and hugging you and say, oh, I miss you so much. And he's hugging you really tight. Visualize that hunger in his eyes to be with you, that, that desire, that passion to be with you, that that love that that's just pouring out of his his cells, out of his skin. That just that look that he just makes you melt because you you're so in love. You're both mutually, deeply, madly in love with each other, and just see it, visualize and feel the love that's growing between you. It's growing deeper and deeper and more powerful. And your chakra, your heart chakra, is the green or the pink. Um, either one. I use. I usually use the green for the. Um, Archangel Raphael, which is all about love and self-love and healing and healing your heart. And I just focus on that healing energy. And it's like this energy that cocoons the two of us together, wrapped in, in each other's arms. And he kisses me passionately. I'm like, oh, and I feel like I'm melting. And and then keep going. But this is a PH, so I, um, <laughs> PG, P, I don't have a TV. PG, PA, a PG, so I can't keep going what I say, but then keep going. Mm -hmm. Whole night Continue the visualization. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And just, yeah, just doing that in your own time, that visualize, uh, visualizations is so strong. And people are like, I, I can't visualize what I want. You can. You just have to give yourself permission to do it. I think a lot of people put blocks around, oh, I can't do that. It's not going to work for me. Bullshit. <laughs> Everyone yeah. has an imagination. It can be a skill that you build up to, but it's just like, imagining and giving yourself permission to be in the moment and figure out what you want and see it for yourself see it happening i love that i have a little workaround about people who say they can't visualize may i go into that one yeah, go, go for it yeah when people say they can't visualize i go sweetheart honey bunch have you ever had a daydream and they're like yeah daydream so scrap the visualization you don't want to visualize i know you can you absolutely can but for right now, let's put a visualization here and let's go into this. I make them look at the right because the right is always like going right. So look at the right. I'm like, you may have it backwards, but I just want to make sure because you've seen the backwards. So put this on the right. And what you do is you're going to just daydream. Daydream. Look out the window and daydream. What would you like your lover to look like? What would you like your husband to look like? What would you like him to feel like? What would you like the relationship to be like? How do you want to attract them? Where do you want to be? Just visual, just daydream. Forget about visualize, just daydream. Because when you ask people, how David, it seems so sometimes more scary to say, it's almost like some people say, I go, let's meditate. And they're like, okay, I go, let's do hypnosis. They're like, what? But it's, it's basically the same theory. It's 
putting you, yeah, but it's just people that, it's just a word. So, okay, we won't do hypnosis. We're going to do meditation. Is that okay? Yeah, I meditate. I'm like, okay, let's meditate. You don't want to visualize? Yes, you can. I absolutely know you can. But it's okay. We're going to daydream. Let's daydream. They're like, okay. I'm like, I'm daydreaming. I'm like, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and you're good at it. <laughs> it's, day, it it's, it's a reframe. Step number three, reframe. <laughs> <laughs> love that so much so what would you be what would be your advice Jacqueline for someone just I guess moving into a position of developing their self-love um I don't know if you want to call it a routine or stepping into their self-love power um maybe they have never focused on that area of their life before and it's something they want to improve upon what would you what words of advice would you give someone moving into that space absolutely in addition to spending and prioritizing yourself and saying time for you, things you love to do. That is self-care. But when it comes to true deep self-love, what I would advocate is the way you identify yourself. Because for instance, I'm not a vegan, but let's say if I'm a vegan, I say, I'm a vegan, and you come to me, oh, I got a juicy steak. You'd be like, oh, I'm a vegan. <laughs> well, same thing. If you, if you want to love yourself, identify yourself with loving yourself. You know what I'm saying? How do you want to identify yourself? And back to the affirmations. Whoever you identify yourself with, that's who you are. If you feel like, well, I'm just not good enough. Guess what? If that's what you think. That's what you're going to believe. That's what you, the reality that you're going to create. But if you say, I am confident, loving, powerful woman, guess what? Say enough with enough power, with enough um, conviction, and guess what? You're going to step into that. And that is how you learn to identify yourself. Any thing that you put after I am is who you become. So if you say I'm confident, I am loving, I'm powerful, and some blank, blank, blank guy comes over and he wants to smack you around and he wants to verbally abuse you or be emotionally or physically or spiritually or any way uh, abusive, um, and not spiritually, mentally abusive, you could say, I am a confident, loving, powerful woman. Confident means I don't have to take your blank, blank. Loving, I reserve my love for someone who's worth and deserving of loving me the way I deserve to be loved with respect and my, and my boundaries. So that would make a decision easy for you to kick him to the curve. And then powerful, you can stand in your own power without needing to be called dependent on the man. So when you have those things that you identify yourself, that also helps you make a decision when you see someone or when you attract someone that's not healthy for you. Because if you stand into authenticity, who you are, that person won't stick around because that person is looking for someone that they can manipulate or control. But when you're standing in your power and you say, I am, and you identify and you step into that power, nothing can move you or stop you. You are unleashing from within and that is sexy. That is powerful. And that's what men of high quality are attracted to. So you want to attract a high quality man, step into your own power and become the high quality woman that he's looking for. And guess what? You would be the ultimate power couple. Nothing could break you apart because it's two perfect a synergy, two perfect people coming together in perfect union for perfect love that is pure and whole and complete love that is not based on someone else needing to complete you or someone else to make you feel whole because you're already stepping into a relationship as a whole, mm -hmm. complete woman that you are. So you're not looking for anything. You're just looking for someone to not to complete you, but to compliment you. And that's what you want. Yes, I love that. That's what a great message. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. I have one last question for you, Jacqueline. Go for it. <laughs> it's a bit of a curveball for some people. What is Jacqueline's legacy? What is your message for the world? What would you like to leave behind? <laughs> I know this, like I know this, like I know this, like I know this, like I know this. My legacy is to have, to empower women to truly, truly fall in love with themselves so they can feel that they're more good than good enough to attract true love and joy and abundance and their heart's desires so they could go out and impact the world and it could be a self-love movement throughout the world in both English and Spanish, and that is why I want more anything, a massive global impact of self-love in all the different languages in all over the world. That is what I want. <laughs> I nailed that one. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, guys. <laughs> love it. I love it. You know your legacy and you're all over it. That's Beautiful. Step into that. I, that that's why I want. I want
everyone to just if every person individually because some people think i don't know why that self-love is, is selfish it's not because when mm -hmm. everyone starts to love themselves they start treating everyone else with love and compassion and that spreads like wildfire that the more you love yourself the more you can love other people the more other people and it's just like a like a domino effect it just spreads like wildfire can you imagine how the world would be if we all loved ourselves so much, so much that then we could spill that over and spread that love onto everyone else. Can you imagine the world it would be? Amazing. I love the self-love domino effect. <laughs> the <laughs> empowerment domino. <laughs> I love it. And I think I, I'm just going to put in here, I think a lot of people get mixed up between self-love and being a little bit selfish with your time and your energy and the ego taking over and being all about me and fuck everyone else <laughs> i'm sorry i'm australian i swear when i get passionate but um there, there is a difference there and being empowered and standing in your own personal power and and being a little bit selfish with your, with your self-love routines is not about shitting on everyone else that's where the ego takes over that's where you're comparing and all that sort of thing but being empowered is definitely as you said it spreads and it helps lift other people up into their power it's a completely different energy absolutely it is it is wholesome energy because that's another thing i always say um when you're giving love from a pure sense of I have so much self-love. I love myself so much, not from an egotistical way, but just I know who I am. I know what I stand for and I have my boundaries. I love unconditionally, but I also respect myself and love myself unconditionally. So when you're giving from a sense of your tanks are so full, you have so much love for yourself. You're giving from a place of generosity, not scarcity. Because can you imagine, and other people feel the energy. When someone asks you for something and you're, so tired because you're so frustrated you feel like you're being taken advantage of because people are always asking asking and you don't love yourself enough your tanks are empty so when you're giving you're giving the fumes you're giving the the little left that you have the little tiny little dust that you have left and people sense that because when someone asks you for something you're like okay and you feel so overwhelmed and you're just giving to give because you feel obligated or people pleasing or because you want them to like you that way you need that reinforcement when you get from that place of scarcity other people feel it but can you imagine when you feel yourself up so much you have so much love for yourself that when someone says something or asks something you're like sure i'll do it and they can set um recognize that you're giving from generosity without asking for anything in return without having hidden agendas or asking for for just a, like a sense of obligation so can you imagine it's just a whole different way of the, the way they receive from you and it's a give and take. And when they receive from generosity, they also spread that generosity around to some, everyone else because now they're like giving from also from a full tank. So it's just, like I said, it just spreads like wildfire. Uh, wildfire. Whoa, wildfire. So it just spreads because the more love you have and more you give, it just keeps going. But imagine if your tanks are in full and you're giving from scarcity, you're giving with resentment or frustration or just thinking, why me? Or why I'm, no one does anything mm -hmm. for me? So when you give with that energy, that energy is not pure and whole. And it, it comes right back at you. Fill yourself up first. And the more you have, then you give from generosity. And that people accept and receive with gratitude and feel blessed to be in your presence. I love it. I feel blessed to be in your presence today, Jacqueline. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am thrilled to be here and thank you for inviting me. And I'm anytime you invite me, here I am. Thank you, thank you so much. This has been amazing. I always love talking about self love, but I love talking about it with someone that's so passionate and, and lives by it. I love that. Thank you so much for being with us and sharing your thank little you, pockets of wisdom. Thank, thank you. Sending everybody love. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, dear souls, for joining me on this sacred journey. If you enjoyed this soul nourishing experience, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you can stay connected and never miss a moment of our soulful exploration. Let's keep this transformative conversation going in the comments below. Share your insights, your dreams, and the magical moments you encounter. This is a community of like-minded souls and your voice matters. If you're feeling called to dive even deeper into the realms of intuition and soulful living, remember that I'm here for you. Reach out to me through the links in the description. Let's embark on a personalized adventure to help you create the life of your dreams. This is Vanessa signing off from the Sacred Soul Shift series. Stay enchanted and keep shining bright.